So Diecast Masters sent me this Progress Rail HO Scale train set for me to unbox, so let's go check it out. So first we're going to take a look at the Diecast Masters Cat M323F. And this is a wheeled excavator. It's also a high rail so you can put it on railroad tracks. Alright, from the front we've got the cab right over here. Also got the cat logo on the arm as well as on the side and it shows like what it's called. And then we have the shovel and the hydraulic system which is actually functional so you can also pose it. And it is stiff so it's not going to be too loose. So here you can take a look at the hydraulic system. All the range of motion you can get. Uh, it's articulated in several different parts. And you can even uh, pull the shovel inwards like that. And if we take a look at the bottom, you can see it says 187 scale, which is just HO scale. So on the side of the cab, we got the side view mirror as well as the windshield wiper in the front. Another side view mirror on the other side. And then there's this bar over here, which is actually a bit asymmetrical just to keep the bucket in place. Now if you rotate it all the round, here's what it looks like on the other side. Here we got some raised ridges on the hole, as well as some bars on the side in between the wheels. Then in the back, we've got the cat logo as well as these two markers and some taillights at the bottom and this yellow bar. All right, make our way back to the front. We also have a beacon right on top of the cab. And if you look at it from the side of it, you could definitely see the orange. The cab also does have an interior, so you can see the seat as well as the controls and cat on the headrest. And here's what it looks like from the top through the sunroof. So now we're going to take a look at its coolest feature, the railroad wheels. Now these things can actually move down if you push hard enough. They do start off a bit stiff, but now you can transform it into a high rail, which sort of elevates it off its road wheels. You can see right here, and I'll just place it on some regular railroad track. So here's how it functions. And if you want to make it go back to the road, you could simply push the railroad wheels up. And if you want to, you can switch out the attachment. So here is the bucket attachment. And this is the ballast tamper, which is a device used to pack ballast underneath, you know, railroad tracks. And here's a 360 view of it, what it looks like with it attached. And you can put this on your model train set if you want to uh, repair some tracks, for example. The third attachment is this rail clamshell bucket attachment. So yeah, here's what it looks like. It's like a crab claw. And you can use this, I suppose, to grab onto things. It also does swivel like this. So now we're going to take a look at another Diecast Masters vehicle. This is the Caterpillar Cat 12M3. The motor grader, which has this plow here just to flatten surface of the land for construction. This have details like the cab, the back section with the exhaust. This thing also does swivel around. So here's what it looks like in the front. Swivel it back and forth. And it does have some headlights right there. And the plow is adjustable to your needs. So if you want to rotate it, you can. As well as move it up and down or side to side even slightly. And here's what it looked like in action. So on the top, we got a solid orange beacon. Got some interior detailing, some step up. And the cheerful. For this one, it does not say cat on the headrest. And in the back, we have this five blade rake, which you guys can move up and down depending on how you want it. And it is stiff as usual at first break in. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the Walter 60 foot OTTX yellow flat car. So here in the front, we got the coupler and some solid grab irons. They actually do not have holes in them. So in the bottom corner, here we have a stirrup step as well as some 
some tiny text talking about the car. And here is the truck, what it looks like down underneath. Moving further down long, here it says OTDX, the road number, as well as some information about the car. And then we have the trailer train logo, as well as a word mark for trailer train. And there also is some details here on the side. You guys can see all the little boxes on the side. It's not just flat. Then we got some more printed details about the car. So on this end of the car, we have the brake wheel and it's actually embedded into the surface of the car, which I do like since it's flush. There also is some details with the planks and there are actual holes on the edge of the car so you guys can tie up stuff if you really want to. And there's also these two hollow channels going all the way across. So now I'm going to load up some vehicles like the wheeled excavator and the motor grader that we reviewed earlier before. The excavator can move around safely on top as there's enough room and the motor grader here in the back just enough. If you actually want the plow to go inside you could probably rotate it as well. So now we're going to take a look at the Walters Progress Rail EMD SD70 ACE. So let's start here from the front. On top, we got the number boards. They are empty though. On the bottom, we got the dish lights, got the plow, as well as EMD 100th anniversary, because it is their 100th anniversary, a nose mounted headlight, and some nubs if you wanted to add in the Walters detail kit. They can add in grab irons. All right, so now let's rotate it to see what it looks like on the side. Here we got sunshade, as well as the cab. And it actually does have an end here, which you can see right there and you can also see the lines for the isolated cab a little vent down there and at the bottom we have this nice silver painted truck I think it looks pretty good and under the sill you can see some detailing there as well it's not just plain and they also added the small F to stand for front and they also added this walkway light so behind the cab, we have this giant cabinet section with the two vents, some also striping detail, which is sort of like a black and white gradient. And there's also these cool yellow striping patterns here going along the side for Progress Rail, a Caterpillar company. So EMD is actually owned by Progress Rail, which is actually owned by Caterpillar, which is the same company that makes this excavator. So on the bottom here, we've got some red painted details like the fuel cutoff switch and the fuel cap. Then here it says 100 years of progress because EMD was made 100 years ago and there also is some details like the vents and then we got some molded on details for these doors so in the back we got the rear headlight as well as some nubs which you can add the walters detail kit for the grab irons and now we're going to rotate it around and there also is some vents underneath the headlights nicely detailed and there also is another 100th year anniversary for emd lots of molded on detail all right so now let's rotate it again to this side um, here we got the brake wheel embedded inside. Then moving down along here in the middle, we got some air tanks for the air brakes, the fuel tank at the bottom there. Take a look at the nice uh, paint scheme and there also is a little step up going up there. And at the bottom, there's a bit of detail there. I'm surprised they actually added this and there is like an e-bill as well. It's all painted black. So now let's go over the roof here. We got the three lines, some tiny vents on top, just like all SD70 ACEs have. And we got the horn in the middle and then in the back we have these two big radiator fans as well as a silver fan on the back and a sand filler hatch all right so now i'm going to take a brief look here on the bottom this is what it looks like this is walters right there in the middle and by the way this locomotive is pretty heavy it's actually heavier than my atherin sd70 ace which i'm going to bring over here just for comparison so these are both the same type of locomotive the sd70 ace and they are on different detail levels atherin is a lot more detailed than the walters but the walters does have a lot of details to make it an sd70 ace and it's probably more economical this way since they're building it as part of this train set with rolling stock and track. Now we're going to take a look at the Walters CSX insulated boxcar. It's a 50 footer. It's leased from FGE. Here's the road number, plate C, and lots of the printed details. Also got a ladder on the edge. At the bottom here we got the truck as well as some FRA striping. And there also is a vent here on the side, some rivets going across as well as some columns. And here is the door. It's actually has some text, it's actually quite legible and it's very nicely detailed. I think they did a pretty good job with this. And there is a stirrup step here at the bottom. All right, so further along in the car, here we have the CSX in big letters, some more printed detailing down here. All right, so if we rotate this around, you can see the end of the car. We've got the, some corrugation going along the sides, CSX road number up here, and some ladders on the edges. And there's actually this little ledge here for a walkway plate, so that is pretty cool. Here's what it looks like on the other side, pretty similar. And here's what it looks like on the top. And on the bottom, you can see there's a little bit of air brake detail. All right, so on the other end, we have a brake wheel. 
Here's what it looks like on the side. So now we're gonna take a look at the Sunoco 10,000 gallon three dome tank car, which I previously thought that was pronounced Sonico, but apparently it is Sunoco. Anyways, here on the side, we have the Sun Oil Company. So lots of textile hazard placard there. And then here in the middle, we've got a ladder. And on the top, got the three domes with the capacity. Anyways, here's what it looks like on the end. Sun X written here on the top, as well as this brake wheel sticking out pretty tall, a little hazard placard and the coupler. And if you check it out from the other end, yeah, it's pretty much the same, just no brake wheel. All right, so here's what it looks like on the top. Definitely a lot of detailing that went into this mold. You can see the riveting detail, and here's what the air brake system looks like underneath. So this set came with three tracks, one is straight, one has a crossing here in the middle, and the other is curved. So these are the Walters Trainline Power Lock tracks, first time I've ever seen them. And here's what it looks like in the back section, you can see the, like, the little indents. On the ends we have these copper plates, as well as this jigsaw puzzle thing. Alright, so here's what the crossing track looks like. It's also a feeder track, so the electric wires, they connect to that part there. And on top we have this wooden looking crossing. And if you read the instructions to connect it, you just lay it down on a flat surface and just press the two sides together. And here we'll just compare it to my Kato unit track on the left, Walters on the right, and you'll see the Walters is a bit higher. By the way, the high rail excavator, it does work on this curve. Because the wheels do have some wiggle room.
All right, so for my final thoughts, there's definitely a lot in this starter set. We got the SC70 Ace locomotive, the high rail excavator, the motor grader, the flat car, the box car, the tank car, as well as the track itself and the power system. It is quite similar to a Walters starter pack, although they didn't really have one with a SC70 ACE before, so this is pretty cool, as well as the diecast masters vehicles, which my favorite was the high rail wheeled excavator. I really like that. I think it's a pretty cool vehicle. You can articulate it a lot. It's uh, pretty stiff, so you can actually stay in position whether you want it on the track itself or use it as a load on the flat car. I think the rolling stock are pretty well detailed. There's a nice variety of cars and the locomotive has this custom livery. It does not exist in real life if you're wondering by the way but it celebrates EMD's 100th anniversary so the livery is pretty unique and it's a pretty cool design. The only thing I wish they would include was the road number. But overall I think this train set is a good starter set to have. It has a lot of essentials. It even goes beyond that because it has those vehicles loads. It's actually Diecast Master's first time making this HO scale model train set so they've been working with Walters probably because half the things are by Walters as well. But I did enjoy a lot of the Diecast Master's you know cat vehicles. I think they're really well detailed so they could be a good addition to add to your model train layout. And you 